Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams, there we go, we're nice and plugged in with Back to Earth Creations, and in today's live stream, we're just kind of chilling and hanging out in the craft room, um, we're going to be doing some mail opening, we're going to be doing some shameless self-promotion, and we're going to be doing some crafting. So if you guys have any questions for me, um, please do the at Yvonne Williams sign. That way it'll actually highlight your comment in orange. Um, and it really helps me to kind of like keep track um, and stay on top of if you're trying to get my attention. I'm putting it in the live chat instead of top chat. Ah, Randy. This is first. Okay. Loaded in here. Hey Maria. Hey Riding Hood. Hey Droma. Hey Sedwick. Hey Sabrina. It's great to see y'all today. Okay. Hey Randy. Yeah. How do I make it? Oh, it's pop out chat. Yeah. Boom. That'll be nice. Okay. Very cool. Ah, I can even make it big screen. Okay. I'm just learning how to do things. Hey, Yvette. Hey, Suzette. <laughs> I'm actually from the beginning, right? Finally back for a live stream. Yeah. We actually stream every Tuesday. I know that a lot of our videos, we've been posting videos for like three or four years now. So uh, if you guys are introduced to our channel off of one of our older videos, you might be getting conflicting or outdated information. So... Um, Y'all can check out our stream schedule and stuff on our website, backtoothcreations.com. Down at the like, main page, bottom of the page, there's a calendar that has like the days that we stream, the days that we post videos, the days that we have patron-exclusive stuff. Um, and we're always trying to update that. So, um, but yeah, we basically, we stream publicly on Tuesdays. We post tutorials on Sundays and do a premiere so that happens at noon. Now for anybody who's confused about our premiere stuff because we've had a bit of confusion it's just like a regular tutorial except for like like right now I'm streaming live and like stuff gets pixelated and I get distracted by squirrels and I don't like always get to the point of what I'm trying to teach because I'm talking to sometimes 300 people are in the room and I'm trying to like it is so I get spread a little thin in the live stream sometimes whereas with our premieres I've already shot and recorded the tutorial and edited it and everything and it's uploaded just like regular but we have a live chat feature where for like like if the tutorial is 10 minutes long the live chat lasts 10 minutes if like our last video it was an hour and nine minutes then we hang out and I just answer y'all's questions for an hour and nine minutes um and it has like a countdown so we can kind of hang out pre-video as well um and that's kind of fun so actually I, I have a ton of fun at the premieres so um you don't have to be signed up for anything special it's still just through the YouTube app so we're good to go um <laughs> Tailways from the industrious squirrels of Squirrel Cottage. Tail waving book, squirrel, how's it going? <laughs> oh, this isn't a touch screen. Crap. Okay. Beep boop. Also, on another note, thank you guys so much for such an amazing auction this past Friday. We actually sold out of stuff, and oh, that's amazing. <laughs> like, uh, if, if you had ordered from our, uh, like if you had won a bid on our auctions, we have all of that stuff up and ready for you to complete your purchase on the website um, and stuff. And it's just, it's going by like really well. Ah, Rebel says the last tutorial is amazeballs. I love it. I love what you've been posting, Rebel. You and uh, distinctively, oh, and I was trying so hard to remember her name. Both of y'all. I've been doing, like, everybody's been posting over to the photo gallery on Discord. Y'all's work looks amazing. I love it when y'all take what I teach and then do it better <laughs> than what I do. <laughs> yes, I am going to do, do you think I should get right to mail opening of it? I think you've been waiting a couple of days for me to get my act together. <laughs> Distinctively different, Kathy. 
Hey Beth, how's it going? Also, more shameless self-promotion, um, we have been posting daily vlogs uh, over on the Vonster Vlog channel for like at least a week now. In YouTube, there was, okay, I changed the thumbnail, but there was a banana in the thumbnail and they edited out my banana. The ominous day of whoever it is on YouTube. They edited out my banana, y'all. Like, that's bullshit. That was crucial to the storyline of that day. <laughs> it's a banana kind of day. No, but. <laughs> okay. So we have three pieces of mail to open today. Daniel says, I saw that. Because I saw it and I was like, I don't even, why would this be all pixelated? And I was like, where's my banana? But, YouTube. Because it's not like I was, I wasn't being, I mean, any more indecent than what a person regularly is with bananas. Like, right? Like, there, there's only so many ways to creatively eat a fresh banana. Um, <laughs> did you need that? Sometimes a banana is just a banana, mistress. And I was like, ah. <laughs> What's the world even coming to? Yvette, I'm going to open yours last because it is the biggest. Um. <laughs> so I'm like low-key tempted for on our next vlog to just have like 20 bananas. Ah. <laughs> uh. Right, Kay? Ah, uh, oh well. I, I, at least that's the biggest thing I have to worry about. Now this one's actually from Rebel Wolf. How do I open it? This is very well taped. I don't know how to open this. Ah. Uh, well, I'm just gonna start cutting. So, you're fine. They've gotta be punch happy or something. Yeah. I don't know, like, I could kind of see, maybe, sometimes it's never just a banana ass minions, right, Nina? I'm just, I don't know how to, Rebel, you wrapped it too good, I'm not smart enough to open this. Ah, uh, thanks, Ken. I see now. Ah, I see. What about this? Oh, the Shivakadu? The avocados? The free Shivakadu? Okay, because I was like, what's a school bag? Eggplant, right? Or we've been harvesting cucumbers like crazy. I should just, I have about 20 cucumbers right now. So we could just. Like one of those art shots where it looks like. Somebody like in just a kiddie pool full of cucumbers. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not doing that. That's. I mean, maybe. There's better uses of cucumbers. I'm actually going to make pickles. Ow. Okay. So, y'all ready? We're going to open this. You should see my Christmas wrapping. Woo! Oh, there's a little thing at the top. Please include this slip in your envelope. Can I read this out loud? <gasps> what? Blue John Chip Beads. BlueJohnCavern.co slash UK. Very weird. I'm gonna have to make myself a little tree of life out of these. Rebel. Oh, hush, puppy. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. <gasps> I did I get some of Rebel's moons? <laughs> oh, I will definitely be filming the pickle making process. Oh, hey, my love. Do what? Zip pickles. Zip pickles. Horseradish bread and butter pickles. Right on, Brooke. Oh my gosh, y'all, Rebel Wolf is goals with her resin and her wire wrapping, actually. 
I'm so good at this stuff, Rebel. But look at that. Oh my gosh, what kind of resin is this? It has a nice, like, it's not at all heavy, but it has, like, a nice weight to it. Gosh, that is stunning. I've got to get a better angle of it. Let's see. Thank you for the water, Randy. I don't know if I thanked you already. You're welcome. Flip this around. Now, do you sell the... Oh, I'm going to have to unplug. Do you sell these, Rebel, like, online anywhere? Where these kind folks can get some for themselves? Really, camera? Really? But those colors, y'all. So pretty. So, so pretty. And there's another one. Super shiny, Kim. Look at that. Very cool. Oh, and you seal the back as well. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, Rebel does outstanding work, hands down. You don't need me to say that. You can see it for yourself. <laughs> on Etsy? Right on. Oh, I guess that's the website right there, isn't it? lichenquirky.com Okay, I'm going to open this bad boy up. E. What does it say? Made just for you with oodles of love. Oh, Rebel. Oh my! Oh my gosh. It's a little slip of tarnish cloth. Oh wow. Rebel. Look at that. Oh, with the tree and everything. How do you oh oh that is neat. That is so cool, Rebel. Oh, there's a beautiful. I'm gonna put this on right now. How do I use my hands? There we go. Oh, there is not a thing about this rebel that isn't just drop dead gorgeous. So, I'm in love. <laughs> that is just gorgeous, rebel. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, ee, really nice. isn't it? <laughs> okay, wait, I'm gonna how I flip this back around. So we got more mail to open. I was like, well, open travels and done. Nope, we gotta keep going. There's more stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, we have um over on Discord. There's some stuff. <laughs> And we have a featured artisans gallery on our website. Um, hey, Christina, how's it going? Oh, that is so pretty. And I did hook it a little bit shorter on the chain, just because I kind of like right there is where I like stuff sitting. Because otherwise, I'll like come down and it'll whack me in the face. Okay. Gosh, this is just wonderful. Thank you so much, Rebel. Yes, Rebel Wolf's Etsy is lichenquirky.com. WW, I think Randy's typing it. No. Oh, could you? Hang on. I'll type it. There you go. I have a keyboard that's new to me. They are my favorite colors. Though, I mean, I change my favorite colors like twice a week. So. Um, okay, it's www.lycan, right? Yep, q u r k i dot. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Ooh, so pretty though. Well, this is a wonderful birthday gift. Okay, this one. Eep. I don't know who this is from. It doesn't really say. How do I open it? Okay, this one's got a. Open that. 
Ooh, a manila envelope. Hope I'm not in trouble. I don't know why I was assist. I think it's because that's what a, my report cards used to always be in. <clears throat> oh, it says Yvonne. But that's me. <laughs> Who's this from? Okay. So that's some trauma I just discovered about myself. Good. <laughs> right, Yvette? Yeah, I feel I've just been served papers. And it's like laminated <laughs> from Catherine. <clears throat> Ooh, is I don't know if I'm supposed to read it out loud or not. Catherine, are you here? Can I read this or can I? Sh I've got to like I've got to. I've got to read this. Like it's on like legal heading and everything. <laughs> like she says, "Dear Yvonne, hey Catherine." Um, no, it's not my birthday yet. I'm just celebrating preemptively <laughs> for like the week before, and then the entire month of August, and then the week after as well. So, <laughs> um, she says, I do not have an email contact for you, and I am not on social media. Therefore, I am sending you this letter via snail mail to thank you for the inspiration I've received from viewing your YouTube tutorial, Dragon Eye of Sauron. Attached are pictures of my first attempts painting eyes on a non-calibrated glass nugget while I awaited the arrival of the calibrated cabochons. The bottom picture is my version of your Dragon Eye of Sauron. <laughs> I now have a number of other eyes in various stages of creation on my craft bench. Know that I am having a lot of fun creating these and now have a number of friends and associates who are interested in acquiring one of my new creations. So I wish to thank you again for your generous and giving spirit. For me, it's a true joy to watch your creative process at work during, during your YouTube tutorials. Keep smiling and don't ever stop creating. Ooh, Catherine, look at you. Ooh, guys. Okay, first off, I have a heart. Not that I doubt you, but those are really good. Like, the, for if that's your first attempt, th those are phenomenal. And this one, I don't believe I could have done better myself. So, I mean, keep at it for sure. Well, that was really nice. And also, oh my gosh, the, like, I need to take notes on your presentation. <laughs> How, where am I going to set this? Um... So, Catherine, if you watch our stuff, thank you so much for for sharing that with me. You're doing phenomenally. Phenomenally. And now is it. Which I've been sitting on for a couple of days. But she told me to wait to open it on Tuesday, so. box for the cats now <laughs> right drum roll ah uh, thanks acid it's from rebel wolf trade of joe's <gasps> okay i think she just sent me trader joe bags <laughs> no i think this was packaging material Do I read it? Do I read it online a bit? This looks amazing. I don't even know what it is, but it... Okay. Aww. Aww. It says, let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pool of what you really love. Everyone can use more brown paper bags, that's for certain. <laughs> Happy birthday, Vaughn. Make sure you look inside what's inside. Miss you, Yvette and Jesse. Mm. Yvette, I miss your face so much. 
I miss hanging out with you and Man Beast. Did you crochet a wrapping for Man Beast? How can I am I can I wear this? Beautiful. Well, if I were Petita and YouTube had a nicer policy about Tata's showing, <laughs> that's amazing though. I've got to figure out a way to like stitch this onto the, the back of a jacket or something. Or I guess I could just put it like on something in my house that color though. That wow, I wish I could crochet like that. <laughs> hey Sam, my little beast of burden. Okay. Y'all, this is shaping up to be the best birthday year yet. I'm just saying. Chihuly, I can't pronounce his name. I've seen his exhibit down in Arkansas. Chihuly? Ch uh, glass. Ooh, wait. Glass. <laughs> so now that you have a book full of glass porn, the budding flower of love began upside down on the carpet of the Bellagio Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, while the lobby pianist played the Peanuts theme song. You guessed it. The man beast and I went... Chucks up for Chihuly on one of the first days we spent together. Oh, I don't know if I was supposed to read this out loud. Oh, a vet. <laughs> oh, Chucks up. Oh, that's not okay. I thought you meant like. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I thought you had sent me a picture of y'all noodling, but it's just Chucks up for Chihuly. Okay. Oh, and there's a CD. Up <laughs> oh, all the tools. Oh, yeah, this is a big old book of glass porn. Thank you so much, Yvette. Look at him when he's doing YouTube's gonna edit that out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit and browse through this. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna browse through this when I can give it my undivided attention. Thank you so much, Yvette. Oh well, hey mate, I just I put a thing on my head because Yvette sent it to me, and that's what I do with stuff that Yvette sends to me. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Oop. All y'all. There's Rebel and Catherine and Yvette. Thank you guys. I'm gonna set this over here. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I'm gonna see how many more times I can run my feet over. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, um Well thank you guys so much. That made my day. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and I'm just picturing you, you and Man Beast getting escorted out of the building for going chucks up in the lobby. Right on, Nance. <laughs> Rebel, yeah. Dude, celebrate every day like it's your birthday. Stop cooking till you're done. Okay. Gosh, these are so pretty. I think I'm going to wrap one of these. I don't know, because I want to keep them forever. And if I make anything, I'm going to try to sell it. Because I'm a monster and that's what I do. Okay, so I'm going to set them over there. <clears throat> Thanks, Yvette. 
So, I'm going to flip this around. Also, I had texted Yvette a picture of a piece that I was working on. Um, and, but I had to change it. So this is how, this is how that piece came out of it. Oh, oh, Penny. I'm spooled rotten. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited about this piece. Oh, and the chat has stopped working on my phone again. And then these were the two pieces from the tutorial. All right, on Penny. Well, this was something that we sent out in a lot of, I think, June's craft along kits, or a bunch of cabs like that. And um, I backed it with the silver nail polish to give it that nice kind of shine a little bit but um I'm still experimenting and learning with not all glasses look the same after firing as what they did prior to firing um so this was a much like redder purple than what I had anticipated but then those were the two from the tutorial <laughs> All right, on Penny. You do Vaughn with the moons. They need your TLC. All right, on your Rebel. You just make credit for me fixing your pen. Okay. Yes, I did. It was Randy's idea, but I was also thinking that already, Randy. <laughs> yes, sassy pants. But it did look like a big old uh something that YouTube, uh, <laughs> something that YouTube would have edited out. Um. <laughs> Daniel says, my July crate arrived today and I love the adventuring green. Right on. Hey, Smashums. <laughs> okay. So, we did the mail opening. And I announced the... I'm going to announce it again just in case. Um, we do our premieres and stuff on Sundays at noon. But just in general, if y'all go to our website back to earth creations.com at the bottom of our main page we update monthly um our calendar of events so we have like a schedule on there um and that way y'all can be kept up to date with all of our uh shenanigans um also oops uh we have been updating daily the monster vlog there we go Ooh, oh, Penny, that sounds amazing. On to the next matter of business. We have cabs for sale. I still managed to fit in a shop update, even around the auction. Um, and I wanted to show y'all this one is still somehow in stock, which I think was one of Randy's favorites from the last batch that we made. But there's two tones of Dicro in it. Let's see if we can get it to focus. But our cabs start at just $4. And the more you buy, the more freebies we sneak in. So I really like that one. Ah, hey, Purple. It says, love the Monster Vlogs. Daily doses. Yep, daily something. <laughs> I've been enjoying shooting them. It's um, it's helped the days to not just slip by, you know. Ah! Smash him says my shopmate ran out of propane early this morning, so I'll be in the shop tomorrow. <laughs> and that is, I'm not tooting. It's a bar stool that I or a little footstool that I put my feet on. See. making fart noises with the footstool. What are you doing? Oh, and crapping muscle. <laughs> um, well, the moons haven't made it up yet uh, onto the website. We're working on that. Um, only the stuff that's in baggies. So, but yeah, be sure to go check that out. Like, um, <gasps> hey! 
There's a pretty kitty on my porch. Okay, I'm gonna go let the cat in. I'll be right back. Alrighty. It actually it is not a glass moon, unfortunately. I've had my eye on uh there's a shop on um what's it called? Etsy that has like lampwork glass mandrels for like cabochons in different shapes. And they have a crescent moon one, but their shop's on vacation. So I was gonna try to snag one for my birthday. Um and then try to actually make some of my own glass moons because I just think that would be so fun. Oh, also, I reorganized my, uh, my desk. So we have this part here. And I feel so bad. I was moving her. My little statue here. And I broke her. I broke her butt. So it, like, oh, it's so broken. And whenever I broke it, I was like, it's okay. One day all of my fragile pieces will be broken too. And then I just sat there and was sad. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to like super glue her butt back together. Uh, or figure something else out. <clears throat> uh, let me just fight with this tripod a little bit more. But yeah, it's I had been using some like little stackable trays to hold everything together. But y'all would not believe... Uh, for like three or four at this point, honey. Um, how much of messes I can make. Like, of all the things I'm good at, I'm best at making messes. Uh, but it's this is just like a colored pencil drawer set from like Amazon. But it's absolutely perfect for if, because I do like to have everything out where I can kind of see it. And a little section for broken ones. Um, but it lets me kind of slide it away. Now this one, the separators don't come out, um, but other ones that I purchased off of Amazon do have removable um, separators. But yeah, so I'm just kind of, so this will help me keep everything organized. It helps keep the dust and dog fur off of it. I don't even have anything in that tray yet. I think this might be where I put my finished pieces. But very, very pleased and excited. I've got my mandrels and stuff up here. And then my to-do projects. I actually think I want to trade these guys. Which, by the way, we do have, for those of y'all who got your craft along kits, if you really like the lotus cutouts that are in there, we have a set of three available on the, uh, on the website. Propols is you, they're removable, you just have to break them out. Ah. <laughs> I want them to be able to go back in though, too, I think. So I'm really, I'm really excited about just kind of having that going. I feel like that's a huge uh, quality of life upgrade. <laughs> Nina says that will get full in half a day. It's actually, it's... Uh, we have two sets of them, and I was thinking about moving the other one over here as well. Um, but we'll see. Oh, Suzette, that's a lovely idea. Make a mobile for yourself from Rebels Rooms. That would be really cool. <laughs> that's true. Pro Pools says you have a glow cord. You can make more dividers. You know, I forget sometimes. <laughs> like, that, oh, well, I could just do this thing. I'm spoiled for choice, spoiled for choice, and I just get completely overwhelmed. So what should we make today, you guys? I'm kind of just fiddling about with the wire wrapping. Lydia says, love the things are also back on. Yeah, I've really been having a lot of fun 
making those. Like this morning, I haven't gotten any footage of it yet, but I went outside and the buzzing in our raspberry bed was so intense that I was like, are these the murder hornets? Like, are they finally here? And it was just swarming with these giant green June bugs. Um, and uh, so I let the chickens out and then it's just been a matter of like, just watching the chickens chase after all of these, um, all the June bugs, like, it looks like the chickens themselves are, themselves are being chased, but it's just them running around like crazy. Okay. So I think I'm just gonna, just to warm up, I haven't wrapped since the day before yesterday, I think. Um... <laughs> Ooh. Right on, Pro Pool. Like 27E. Let's see. Um, possibly. It's very difficult to make, like, each of the die crow come out just one of a kind. Um, but we do have a more die crow for next week's auction as well. I think so. I'm an option next week. Sorry, uh, shop update is what I meant to say. I'm sorry. They're not cicadas. They're like legit just June bugs. Like there's a dead one on the porch. Let me go get it and I can show you. June bugs could bite. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's just a June bug, though. It's not a cicada. Um, hmm? Oh my gosh. What would you do with that box of cat? I don't know. I guess on the table? <laughs> yes, I dislike June bugs immensely. Even worse now, it wouldn't be me. Um, I didn't even think, like, I didn't think that they had <sighs> mouth parts for biting. I guess they do, though. Um, but uh, the chickens absolutely love them, and I love watching the chickens have fun. So, there's that. It might have, he might have just pinched me with his little, his little feet or something. I don't know. It startled me. It, any kind of movement from something that you think is dead is very startling. I'm just going to say. <laughs> But yeah, they do they do drive like they're drunk or fly like they're drunk. Um <laughs> Brooke. They pinch, yeah. Mmm, then it must be a Japanese beetle, because they're very vibrant green. Would you consider doing goddess laser cutout shapes? Ooh, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Quite possibly. Wait, I was going to do... Why is that doggy tap dancing in there? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, I'm hoping that the chickens eat them all too, Brooke. Fortunately, they're very big and very slow and very clumsy. Not the chickens, but the bugs. Um, 
So I'm cheering. I'm cheering for the chickens. Teresa, I'm trying to wrap this wire in half round. This is 16 gauge copper. I'm trying my darndest to wrap it in um, 18 gauge half round. But I started kind of too close to the end. Uh, I wish, Red Cow, the chickens will not eat squash bugs. And that's probably one of the biggest pests that I have in the garden right now, is squash bugs. Really? Well, dang it, Lydia, the bees just can't catch a break, can they? What happened to the bird hornets? <laughs> They're busy eating all the bees. <laughs> what? what? It eats them like fish in a bear. I don't know, some of them, Penny, I'm going to have to get vlog footage of it because some of my chickens are not very good at catching <laughs> or catching the Japanese beetles. Pepper and nutmeg are pretty good. Like the older girls have it down. But the younger girls, like they keep, uh, they, they don't fully commit to the tackling of the bug out of the air. <laughs> the way that Pepper and Nutmeg and Poppy even do. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oh, I really bent the heck out of that, didn't I? Maybe if I just scooch it down a little, nobody will notice. But too far. Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> hmm. Oh, run to the bathroom, Rebel. We'll be here when you get back. Hey, Patricia. How's it going? I guess I should have bent it first. Well, here we are. What's wrong with that dog? Oh, uh, it's fair. Let me angle this just a little bit more. got rain for the first time in a long time yesterday and it was glorious a proper thunder summer thunderstorm Little tap dancer, what's up? Hey, Randy, could you help me out with something? Could you grab me one of those big square cabs that you just cleaned up? Yeah. Thank you. I guess it is coming up on giveaway time. Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes till we're doing our giveaway. We're giving away one of our $10 cab boxes off of our Patreon. Um, and to enter, be sure to leave a comment on Randy just linked to the... Uh... Oh, honey, that's perfect. Thank you. Randy just left a link on the screen. Okay, give it. Hmm? Oof. Amber, you're so chunky and perfect in every conceivable way. I must touch you, chunk. I must touch the chunk. Ch 
she hates it. Oh, it's the very considerate of you, Nina. here on the back. Randy's been playing uh, a lot of World of Warcraft, but whenever he does play video games, he does seem to really enjoy his Switch. Yeah, I really should have thought more before. So, well, I'm, I'm discovering a lot of things to not do. Okay, so this is how it looks without any silver on the back. It's kind of translucent. Let me shake this up. When you can use acrylic, I just really prefer the uh, acrylic paint. I just really prefer the really shiny, wet look of nail polish. Getting all those edges nice and clean. Now I'm actually going to have to leave this to sit for a while, but now... <laughs> It, uh, you can't tell because of the uh, ring light reflection. But it has just a little bit of a metallic shine through. And we won't be able to see the wires going across the back, which is pretty nice. Um, May says, how do you seal the nail polish and keep it from scratching? Um, a, a, honestly, a lot of the time I don't. I'm just very careful with it. But whenever I do seal it, sometimes I'll use UV resin. Sometimes I'll use a two-part doming resin epoxy. Sometimes I will use just a Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. Um, you know, any of those are viable options. Hey Cynthia, I am using 16 gauge round and 18 gauge half round wire here. And I am really distraught that this bent like that. So I'm going to try to see if there's anything I can do and there doesn't seem to be meh, okay. Yeah, really should have bent them before uh, putting it all together. Also, give me just a moment. I need to get this up out of the way. There we are. Thanks, Lydia. So I'm going to take this and grip, like, right... I'm going to push this up some. There we go. And I'm going to grip this just right there. And bend up and over. Over. 
Oof, Kelly. Hey, Natalie, how's it going? What you been up to? So that's just rocking and rolling. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that, Daniel. Squeezing that. There we go. Get a little less movement going on there. Hmm. Well, the only thing is I kind of wish I had enameled this uh, <laughs> enough, um, like, a while ago. That way it would have been dry by now. Um, Natalie says, nothing much, just trying to do my shop, but the heat is way too much. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, when it gets hot, I just shut down, I hear you. I don't know what Randy's doing outside. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and bend. Take this, grip it, and bend. Now I'm going to pull off another segment. Oh no! Yeah, that is a downside of the rain, isn't it? Kind of everything starts to hurt. <laughs> it was already hurting. It just starts to hurt worse. <laughs> Move that aside so I don't bump it. Right, mistress? Okay, kind of gently bending everything out of the way. Ah, uh, bye, Jim. Thanks for hanging out. What's that Randy doing? Oh, he's brushing the... He's for busting the dogs. So, um, uh, yeah, thank you, honey. I got a small dog for the pair of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's bath time again. Hey, Lynette, how's it going? Uh, Patricia asks, so is Craft Along Con still going to be a thing in the future after this horrible pandemic? We think so. We would like for it to be, but we're kind of, um, the concept has been shelved for the time being to let us kind of just ride things out. <laughs> um, Flannery, yeah, I absolutely love because sometimes, like, my hand gets in the way. So having having these bent nose pliers, like, I, I really absolutely love them. Hey, Randy. Mm -hmm. Would you please come sit with me and read off the, uh, off the lap? It's got everything set up now. Ooh! Are these ones your favorites? <laughs> no. Ooh. 
These are just some of the clean ones. Oh. So this is some previews on next week's shop update. This one is easily my favorite. <laughs> I don't know, I really like the black and pink ones. Yeah. <laughs> Getting the ooze. Yeah. I think we were experimenting a little bit with some scrap die crow, and I think we're going to be doing some like this uh, for like um, September's kits, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what we can manage, but I'm absolutely loving them. Well, here, I tell you what. Since we just a little while away. Uh huh. I'm going to sit in there until you do the okay. giveaway. That sounds good to me. So I might just wrap one of these guys today. Oh, that looks nice. You likey? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love that die curve glass. For sure. Mm hmm Okay, gotta get finished making the bale though. But yeah, so if you guys like cabs like these, be sure to consider joining our uh, monthly cab boxes over on Patreon. They start at ten dollars, so those are um, just to the continental U.S. The ten and twenty, ten and twenty dollar tiers. We only ship uh, United States addresses because otherwise it's like sometimes twenty dollars to ship. Um, but our thirty, forty, and fifty dollar tiers go out internationally, and we just eat the shipping on those. So. Where did my... There we are. I just, I really like having a spot for things to go that isn't just on the table, um, if that makes sense. Like having this drawer, I can just use my mandrel and then boop, pop it back into the, uh, to the drawer where it goes. But, um, but yeah, and our $20 and up kits get wired as well. And we are hoping to get some half round and square wire into our kits as well. Those that'll, that will likely be for our higher tiers. Hmm. I'm not entirely certain how I want to have this position. You know? Let's open that back up and see. Uh, Flannery, yeah, the $10 choice uh, for the digitized is sold out. We've sent everybody in that tier, I don't know how many messages, um, trying to let them know to select a different tier. But if you continue scrolling down, um, you will see that there is a $10 cab box t uh, selection. And that is unlimited. So, but no, we're, we're trying desperately to phase out the um, $10 digital tier because that has moved down to our $5 supporters. Now get all of that content. Um, and our chainmail tier. Like, I think we still have a couple of people who uh, are still sitting in the uh, $20 chainmail tier. Now, we've still been sending them kits. They've just been getting wire-wrapped stuff. So, um we, it's just sometimes people spam folders, eat the messages and stuff, but uh, we have quite a few different options on there. We have multiple $10 tiers, so, well, just the two, but one of them is marked as sold out to try to prevent more people from signing up for uh, the digitized content, because also, since it was digital content, um, it wouldn't acquire. Ow! Oh, that hurt. Um, not used to that. 
drawer being open. Um, since it was digital tears, it wouldn't acquire people's shipping addresses, so we're not actually able to fulfill those $10 kits in the digital tiers. So that's why we're kind of hoping um, people will change tiers. Um, Cynthia says, so should I raise my tier to above 20 to be eligible for future upgrade wire? Um, I don't know because it's going to be different every month. Um, like, I, I'd like to tell you yes, but I don't want you to be disappointed. Like, if that makes sense. It's giveaway time. Okay. I'm fiddling with this for a minute. Okay, last chance, y'all, to get uh, your name into the hat for this week's giveaway. To do that, you would go and leave a comment on last week's live stream. Ah, uh, right on, Cynthia. Well, if it's uh, if it's in your budget and if you're inspired to do so, uh, by all means, please. Um, also, we do send out, like, um, you get more cabs and you also get fancier cabs the more you pledge. Like, does that make sense? I do like, there we go. Okay. Oh, give me a minute. Oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Beep beep. What's up, Mother Beeper? It is time. Oh. Is it safe? oh, it's not safe. Oh, I'm all sweaty. Give me a minute. <laughs> what are you giving away today? We are giving away one of our cab boxes. Do we have any cab boxes left over? Actually, I thought it was just going to be a $10 one. It's actually going to be a $20 kit. Ooh, $20 kit. Yeah. So, in today's giveaway, we are... You can't see the cabs because they're wrapped up all sneaky-like, but you're getting some 20-gauge titanium-toned para-wire and two or three cabochons and some laser-cut stuff. So, <laughs> good luck. May the odds ever be in your favor. Yep. All right. There are 84 <laughs> of you. Okay. Here we go. Yep. Quick. Congratulations, Regina! You are a one on one chicken dinner. Indeed. Today is the 28th. 7, 2820. R-E-G-I-N-A. Excellent. Regina, if you could send us an email to back to earth creations at yahoo.com with with where you would like for us to ship to, then we'll get that shipped off to you just as soon as we hear from you. Also to everybody else um, who has won in the past. Um, we ship internationally, but you've got to email us within like a month of you winning. Otherwise, we just cycle it right back into the giveaway pool. Because um, otherwise, we end up with like a big old pile of unclaimed giveaway stuff. Um, so there is an expiration date on this giveaway. Like you've got to come and claim it. Um, so <laughs> good luck <laughs> in the future and congratulations, Regina. You want to come hang out over here? Yeah, or actually, I don't know what I'm going to do with that uh, wire wrapped piece, but we can sit here. What? Yeah. What's my cat? What? There was no cat there. Where's my cat? I don't know. Probably in her chair. Her chair. Oh. Her chair. So. Herp and a derp, derp, herp and a derp, derp, herp and a derp, derp, herp and a derp. Randy, you. could you read comments to me? 
Or rather, just read me people's questions. What that? That goes in the uh, second drawer down above Sam's butt. So, I'm just here to make everybody's OCD angry. <laughs> but we are setting up for some fused glass dichroic cabochons, which I'm very excited about. Oh, I needed that. What are people saying? Oh, okay. Y'all, let's try to keep it on topic and stuff. Does anybody have any craft-related questions that they'd like to, you know, segue, you segue into? The shop? Us? Like, was that a question for us? Yeah. Oh, uh, honestly, we've been handling quarantine phenomenally. Um, it is, quarantine life is not too different from con life in between, so it's just like a really long pause in between conventions, if that makes sense. Like, uh, we're, we're just living kind of like how we typically do, just we don't go to conventions on the weekends. But the rest of the time, Randy and I have always been very, very anti-social. <laughs> Not like anti-anti-social, just like we never leave our house or talk to other human beings. Um, so that's been basically the same. So masks are super sweaty to wear. Do I? Yeah, I do miss going grocery shopping at one in the morning. Um, that was kind of our thing. <laughs> like we'd go and we'd work out at the gym, and then like go and pick up groceries and stuff. Not every day, but like just whenever we needed something. It was really nice to be able to while we were out. Uh, pop out and do that. What's the major difference between working in COE 90 and COE 96 class? Um, I'm still very inexperienced in that realm. So far, the 90 seems to come out cleaner. It doesn't cling to the kiln wash as much, but that might not be the COE. That might just be, you know, maybe I'm using a different kiln wash. Uh, maybe I actually let my kiln wash dry completely and that's why it's not sticking. Um, you can get slightly different colors between the two, like, but also I, that was just when I was shopping on just Delphi glass. Uh, I've started shopping at artclasssupply.com, um, and they seem to have a much broader selection of colors in the 96 COE than what 90 COE has. So. This might be something for maybe if there's somebody else in chat who has more experience and a little bit more hands-on know-how than I do. Um, like, also, I think in theory, I haven't experienced any differences in this, but uh, the lower, like the higher the COE, like 96 and 104, those COEs are soupier than uh, like 90 COE. So I think whenever I get into doing screen melts and stuff, I may actually use um, some of my 104 COE like uh, soft glass for t torch work, but we'll have to see because I don't know if I can get that in sheets of clear. So, but um, the main thing that I've been paying attention to is just making sure that I don't mix them. Also 90 COE has a lower annealing temperature so I don't fire them at the same time. But again, speaking from the realm of inexperience, just because I'm doing something a certain way does not mean that it's correct or the best way of going about doing something. How much does a machine cost in order to do those pieces? Um, like a kiln? Yeah, I guess. Um, 
I've seen some kilns. It, a lot of it depends on the size. You can get a microwave kiln set up for like a hundred bucks. And if you think you'd like it just as a hobby, you know, level production, like if you just want to make cabs for yourself, um, that might be the way to go about it. Randy and I went ahead and got this machine. Uh, this kiln was like 1,600, I believe, and that's before the kiln furniture, like the posts and the kiln shelves and stuff. Um, but we also knew we'd be, we needed to manufacture um, around 700 cabochons a month for, you know, we put anywhere from like two to five in each of our kits. Um, and so, yeah, we, we knew we were going to be making a lot of stuff. And I also wanted to be able to have the option to make slumped glass, uh, like, not pottery, but like dishes and stuff. Like, I want to make some bowls and some, like, lawn, lawn like, garden ornaments and stuff. Woo! Like, here we can see. I'm going to flip this around. Woo! So these are how they come out. Yeah, the giveaway's done for today, Danielle. So this is how they start. Just little half-inch tiles that we stack together. And then this is how they come out fired. Yeah, August is, um, yeah, I'm going to put, <laughs> yep, like little chubby squares. And we're going to try to do them enough, like, um, earring kits, or like, you know, enough that in our craft along kits you could do earrings, or, you know, what have you. I do think I would have liked to have gotten a sheet of just clear. No, it's still going. I, the camera really doesn't like it whenever I pick it up and move it around. So let's try this. Yes. <laughs> so this is how they start, and this is how they end up looking. Woo! <laughs> So super duper pretty. Absolutely love decorate glass. And more than anything, I'm excited to see what y'all do with our calves in your own work. Because I feel like that's just the coolest way to collaborate is to see y'all use our artwork in your artwork. Yeah, uh, maybe, uh, ring, earring, very petite pendant. Um, I, I, I'm thinking about, I want to try to do some wire wrapped into like the bail of some bigger wire wrap pieces. Like I know Oxana Crafts does some of her like vase style pendants where she has like a large tab lower down and then a smaller tab higher up. I feel like these might be perfect for incorporating into that style of wrapping. or uh, incorporating into polymer clay pieces, or maybe, you know, you have a large polymer clay frame, like hand sculpted. So they come out about 15 to 18 millimeters uh, across. Any more questions? Can you wire up those and link them into a bracelet? Oh, definitely. That would look really cool, actually. And something that I see a lot of people do with little uh, melted dot caps like this is they'll actually use E6000 and just epoxy them 
to like a metal bracelet blank that has like little tabs and stuff. So uh, the E6000 holds onto glass really well, especially if you like stuff the back up a bit with um, some heavy grit sandpaper. Uh, right now I'm setting these guys up, these little square tiles, to be full fused into some beads like this, some small cabochons. I would love to make garden sculptures with dichro glass. Um, currently the biggest thing that's standing in my way is that it's very expensive, like dichro is very, very expensive. Um, is there a way to set bales of wire into the glass? I have seen other people do that. I personally have not tried it yet, um, but that is something that I wanted to start experimenting with. But we were going to, um, before doing that, I wanted to get August's Patreon packages uh, ready. So, uh, where I'm fulfilling all of what we need for that first, and then I'm going to get to experiment. Randy, I really appreciate you just snatching the uh, questions for me. Yeah. We fuse them together and then cut them up to make multicolored puddle caps. Well, that's what we're doing here with this slab. Yeah. And I'm actually waiting to get some, like, to sell enough stuff off of the website that we can get um, some. They're called fire dams. It's like a two inch tall, like, section of kiln shelf that you can put up on the side and we can make like a very thick piece and then I wanted to cut it into cross sections, lay it down and sprinkle it with clear for it and melt that. Um, so again to get some really cool stuff. Now this one here is an example of we took some of the puddle pads we had made at the Creative Escape Glass Studio uh, pre-Rona or pre-quarantine at least um, and then melted them. Some of them came out just a little too small uh, to use in jewelry, but we put them in a mold with some clear frit, and they melted out really nicely. Uh, like Randy, she says he really likes those. So, lots and lots and lots of experimentation, and I've really been enjoying that. And uh, we are making videos and blog posts over on BackchairCreations.com. Um, we have a blog where we just do kind of pictorials showing step by step, you know, well, when we stack it like this, it came out like that. Just, not just for our reference, but for y'all's is too, if you're ever interested in getting into this. It can be kind of risky, especially if you're using a more expensive glass color or type. Um, it can be kind of risky to use your own materials. What's up, babe? This is a kiln. This is a kiln. Them into that shape, or do they somehow, or do you somehow shape them? Um, both. Whenever we do the little cabs like this, glass is a liquid, like it's not like a true solid. Um, science, so uh, but whenever it's fusing, it goes molten and it has a surface tension. So its own surface tension will take it consistently into about four to six millimeters thick. Um, so if you lay something out like this was at this piece here was actually stacked almost half an inch high with frit and then when it melted out it leveled out into a surface tension. We buy them in sheets like this. We buy them in sheets like this that are three millimeters thick. We do have some that are thicker or thinner just depending on what we were going for. Thank you baby. Mm -hmm. We cut them up into tiles or whatever various shape that we're looking for. And then, so whenever we stack them, 
uh, they'll melt and go to that like like a little droplet of molten glass, uh, and they'll stay whatever thickness their surface tension puts them at. Now, to do pieces like this, we actually stack the frit into a mold, which I was going to stack next, honey. Did I leave my molds outside? Uh, they're not in the drawer. Um, could you go, there's four molds on the uh, ironing board. Could you bring those in for me? Yeah, thank you, baby. Gosh, she's the best. And a big reason of why I chose this kiln is it's a Paragon CS16S. Um, it is a 16 inch by 16 inch by so 8 inches deep. So I can actually stack what we're doing up a bit, which is very, very nice. What's up? Is there bubbling? Yeah. Yeah, that's typically a humidity thing. Huh. I don't know. Perhaps she had a Oh, no. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, really? I may need to respray them. So, we're just getting these last couple of tiles stacked together. And then I'll be able to show y'all. Oh, only four pieces left. So this is a kiln post because it's the kiln goes up to 1,500 degrees. And I'm going to take this kiln shelf and just sit it right on top. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm going to have to respray those. But like uh, this here, this is one of our fused glass molds. So we could take like little broken chunks or uh, we buy it pre-smashed in something called frit. And you can stack it in there and do all sorts of different colors and things. And then whenever it melts, it's like cake in a cake pan. Yeah, so this is an example of the frit that we purchased. Um, and you can stack it in there and, and then full fuse it down. And that's what I use this top shelf for, is we'll actually be going through and sitting all of our molds. And I'd like to get more uh, shelves, that way we can, I mean, because if we could run our kiln less, <laughs> uh, last month we ran it almost every single day, uh, but we only had our eight inch kiln shelves, like the 12 inch hadn't arrived. And that's probably the part that um, due to quarantine and the pandemic and everything like that, getting the kiln shelves, this is probably the most challenging time that we could have chosen to start expanding and investing into making glass because there was a whole bunch of like, mm, the, the manufacturer is out of stock and they're not in production right now. And I'm like, eh, okay. <laughs> The electric bill? It was it was almost three times what it usually is, but we had we were running at least two additional air conditioners for an entire month and a half. One week we were running seven. Yeah, one week while my sister and both of her daughters were here, we were running seven window units air conditioners. Uh, so we're no more data is required. Um, <laughs> before we can get that sorted out. But that's why our cabs start at $4 a piece is because they're very expensive to make. Um, so there's that. Like these little dichro, this piece right here was a dollar. A dollar. <laughs> so, ah, super expensive. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Nance says I thought four units was a lot. Yeah. Well, we've got three units in the downstairs. Um, we've got three units in the upstairs, and then we've got a unit in the attic. Um, so there's that. 
um, could you use solar power for your kiln? Laura, I'm very ignorant on all of that. Um, I have no idea. So, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> Brooke says $4 is a really good price for a handmade glass cabochon. I'm really hoping so, Brooke. Like, I wanted, I wanted to make our cabs affordable enough that y'all would be able to use them in your own work and then sell it at a competitive price and be able to have like a healthy profit margin like like dude get those dollar dollar bills like <laughs> we've all got bills to pay we've all got stuff to buy um yeah lydia says and your labor costs i don't get paycheck i'd be doing this like i could be on a, a stranded on a desert island and i would be just arbitrarily stacking things into piles and and what and, and holding a rock like 30 minutes in to being stranded I'd have like a Wilson brand rock camera and I'd be talking to it and I'd be like hey guys another day in the life like <laughs> just live in the dream um <laughs> with some info on the kiln on solar system right I don't know a lot of that is I guess we would have to just look at how much constant draw um like solar can support because i know a lot of it's like on batteries and stuff and we run the kiln for anywhere from 20 to 23 hours um now grant like i don't know what at least eight of those hours are just at cooling though but it's actively on like clicking actively on for at least 10 to 12 hours um is there a way to tell what coe stained glass is if you don't remember or is it not labeled not all stained glass, like any glass can be used as stained glass, but not any stained glass can be used for fusing because a lot of the times the color treatments and things used to get the stained glass to look the way that it does um, might not hold up, like it might react or it might fade or it might just disappear entirely whenever you heat it up to full fusing temperatures or even sometimes just tap fusing temperatures. So, um, the best way that I would initially test is if you have like a little broken piece of it, um, you can take that and just melt it in your kiln just to see, just melt it on like a kiln washed little or a piece of like uh, kiln fiber paper, um, and see if it would, like what happens, do some science. Um, and then what I would do, again, complete noob very very ignorant um i'd take something that i know that this is 90 coe and i'd take this glass if after fusing it does actually hold its color the next step would be fuse it with the 90 coe and see what happens and wait like a month and like knock it on stuff and see what happens because if it shatters then you know it's not 90 coe i think again please correct me if i'm wrong because this is how I test my own crap. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I'd test it with my 96 COE. And if that doesn't work, then I don't know what to do. So, uh, Katrina, who is way more experienced than I am, says basically assume that stained glass can only be safely fused to itself. That's very good advice. But if you want to destroy some shit, <laughs> Um, <laughs> get the mallet. Yup. <laughs> Can the kill wash be reclaimed and reused? I don't know. I've been hiding it in the ground in my front garden. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, may maybe? I don't know, because I think there's a binding agent. Is there a binding agent that fires off and then after it's been fired, it like doesn't really work so good anymore? I don't know, this is some, these are the things we need to know, that we need to be asking ourselves, right? Are the fused cabs molds expensive? <sighs> um, it, well, it depends. Delphi Glass actually runs a lot of very reasonable sales periodically. Like, actually, like, all the time. It's just enough to, like, make me always be needing something. Um, like, uh, these ones here. I've been able to get them on sale for $18, and I've also seen them for sale for $40. So, not for sale, but like on sale, like being sold for 
forty dollars because that is not a sale um but also the thing that we spray it with um the zip can be anywhere from 35 to 50 dollars for a shaky aerosol spray can um and that that's expensive and i go through like two of those a month <laughs> oh so it's but and do they last a long time? They've been lasting a while. Like, I actually think I'm going to break them before they break. Like, like, that if they break, it'll be because of me dropping it or something. Um, how you balance tools and molds when making sales? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Suzette says, if treated well, years. That's the hope. That is the hope. The uh, tools will last a long time, so... Yeah, ho hopefully the tools the will, will last a long time. Um, where is the cab bolts? I'm uh, pay for this off of the next four sales. No, it's, they're going to last for years. I'm sorry, so I didn't mean to talk over you. Yeah, we, we factor, we factor that in big picture, not so much on the individual sales of pieces, if that makes sense. Um, the website that I get my glass molds from currently is Delphi glass.com like if you search d-e-l-p-h-i glass um just put that into like google or something uh that should get you where you're going uh but i use glass molds from there hopefully sales make back profit within a year we're hoping so we're hoping so and that's why shameless self-promotion we have cabs for sale up on our website where you can go and buy them and use them in your jewelry night bev I can rarely hear Randy anyway, so I pretty much hear Charlie Brown adults when he talks. Yeah, sorry, Tanya. <laughs> Are you selling jewelry on your Backdoors Creations website or only during your auctions? Medieval, so far we've just been doing them in our auctions. We don't, like, it's really hard to keep stuff in stock. Um, but we will like we're not saying that we're not going to sell jewelry on our website it's just that so far we've only been able to make enough to meet the demands of the auctions so uh bullseye glass is the supplier I use most more stained most more stained glass but lots of die pro as well i really bullseye quality is very nice i i i don't know why randy and i chose to go with 96 coe as our predominant, it was like a couple dollars cheaper per canister of uh, frit, and that's what we've been using a lot of. Um, will you do custom if mold and frit is provided? Mm, quite possibly. <laughs> quite possibly, yeah, what's up? You, yeah, do you want the mold back when we're done, or is it like... <laughs> I go through silicone molds like toilet paper. Yeah, and that's... That was something we were experiencing with resin is while on a lot of fronts it's a lot less expensive, on some fronts it's somehow more expensive too. Like, you know, I, I don't mind paying 20 to $40 for something if it's going to last me for years. And the kiln's stupid expensive, but also that was 16 gallon kits of resin which is what we use in about six months. So that kind of balances out that way, if that makes sense. I still have a big box of 90 COE to send you. Ooh, oh my gosh, Katrina. I would go crazy for that. <laughs> Rona got in the way, I hear that. I hear that so much, <laughs> like I feel it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go out and spray these. I'm sorry I had you bring them in. Well, all of them, like, uh, let's see. Like, you can kind of see on the sides. No, it's good. It should be good. Yeah, that one needs respray. I need to respray two of them. And I think what's happening is that bottle's getting low. Field trip. Field trip. Do you mind manning the camera for me? Nope. You're just gonna stand back? Yep. Okay. You try. Yeah. 
you got to put down the ducky if you want to play the saxophone. Thank you. What? Ouch. Ouch what? I forgot to put shoes on. I forgot to put shoes on. Oh, look at those clouds. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty to look. You looking at the clouds? Don't, don't watch me. Look at the clouds. Can I mix it for a minute yet? No, not even close. YouTube's gonna put those. If YouTube censored out my banana, your best bet they're gonna censor out. <laughs> Ow. Shit. <laughs> Can you read some comments or something? I can't see the thing. Okay. You can flip it around. You can here. Ouch. Can you press that. Maybe. That. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now you can just turn the whole contraption around. There you go. Ah. I'm stepping on like broken glass. Why are you putting broken glass there? I didn't mean to. I just do that ouch, ouch, ow. Out here, that thing. Ouch. No, this stuff actually dries really fast. It's just I don't want that aerosol going inside. I'd love to have a spray booth with like a HEPA filter and all kinds of crap, but here we are. Okay, field trip over. We're back. <laughs> Oops. There we go. We'll sit in my chair. So we spray them like whenever you batter a cake pan, you want to have, um, like when you flour a cake pan, you want to have all the sides and everything really well, well coated. Hey puppy, I love you. So you can kind of see, that's how we prep our molds up. Now we do let it dry completely though before we start putting the frit in. Ooh, I'm super far behind. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to put shoes on my little feetsies. Oof. Okay. Flip flops, mamas. Yeah. No, it our porch is filthy. Like, there's like brambles and rose thorns and all kinds of crap all over the front porch. Um Kelly, thank you. This is by Rebel. Uh likeandquirky.com. She made it and sent it to me. I absolutely love it. Are we doing red gold this time? We are doing a batch of 90 COE, so for this one, I'm actually doing, I was going to have Randy smash me some frit. We have, gosh, I forget, who sent this to me? All this glass. I had written it down so that I'd remember and then promptly forgot. But yeah, I've got some 
Droba? Did you send this to me? Who sent this to me? It was like a bunch of really nice 90s COE. Um, I'm so bad with names. I'm so sorry. I feel like I fail you guys every time I can't remember. Um, but we're going to smash this into Frit to use in the, in the molds. Hey, Wayne. Can you smash me some Frit, boo? Me. Not drama? Okay, ow. Um, you can Smashing make your own molds. Really, Suzette? Do it. Smashing it all? Yep. Or am I doing uh, time? Just these two together. They are, one is a translucent black, the other is no pink black. So we've got this Frit Ready? Smasher. We're going to go smash Frit for the poor. I love you, baby. It's 90. It's 90. Okay. But yeah, he's going to smash that. And then, um, that's fair, Red Kel. <laughs> it's actually Rebel's resin and then a glass tab. Let me get this moved over here. I feel like I'm looking up. It's hurting my neck. So, uh, we're actually going to be doing the red tones and stuff probably starting next week because I just need to burn through or actually yeah I need to burn through this 90 um oof. Oof. but yeah I'm really excited for this one. Like, I need to do more layers of the clear and translucent green. Hey, Daniel, in, in Brazil. Be care careful, sometimes there's glass stuck to the end of it. Okay, there we are. Could you grab me a sheet of paper? Oh, baby, this looks great. I emailed the link to the store, actually, like a year ago. Whose store? I think I missed something. Right? <laughs> right, Kelly? Okay. So this is a steel smashy thingy, and so we have this thing, this magnet, right here, so whenever I pour... It is a special smashing pot. It is a sm special smashing pot. So whenever we pour, it catches any little metal bits. And then I also come through and magnetically clean the glass because I don't want to get any metal. What are the molds made of? They're ceramic, I do believe. The molds are ceramic. Randy, thank you so much. I, I know I've already thanked you, but thank you so much for doing the uh, questions for me. And then I've been using this only for 90 COE just because I want to make sure that I'm not cross contaminating. There we go. And we could go through and sift this, but I actually like having it all be mixed. So now we have this little thing of frit. And I'm going to come through. You might even pick out the bigger pieces and go smash it again. I, I like the bigger pieces. Okay. The bigger the pieces of frit are, the less bubbles that we'll get. So now I'm just coming through and doing a little bit of a scoop. What up, baby? Uh, do you answer what the molds are made of? Yes. The molds are made of ceramic, just in case she didn't hear me.
I want to get like a nice background color on this. Let's see if I'm going to flip this around. There we go. Do you have to be careful not to overfill? Eh. On these teardrop ones, I actually have to be more careful to not underfill because if I don't fill it quite enough, then it will surface tension itself into just a circle and that defeats the purpose of um, <laughs> having the nice teardrop mold. So typically whenever I fill the molds, And now this is also the part, this tube was about, like, it was only full to, like, here, like, Dorito bag style. And it was, like, 40 or $50 uh, for the tube um, for only two ounces of Rainbow Dicro. So, again, that's pretty expensive, but it's beautiful, so here we are. Um, this mold in particular would not, but they do have, uh, Delphi Glass and other companies, um, do have... Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 like no, this is, um, they'll be priced accordingly. But I certainly don't want to skimp people. But I wanted to get that effect of the uh, purple dichro. You know? Yeah, but you don't want dichro overlapping itself. So. I, I think I do. Though I'm not stacking it so thick, but... Uh, I don't mind a little bit of layering because it does have those chunks of clear in between. So it can kind of give some really cool effects. Okay, so there's that much. I forget what I was talking about. Um, I'm not sure what a tectite is. Um, I don't know. A lot of the problem with encasing other materials in glass is like putting like a quartz crystal or something in glass. The quartz does not expand and contract at the same rate as our fusing glass. So you're going to be getting a lot of like fracturing and stuff. So something like that, I, I, I don't really know how I would go about doing that. Whoa, that was super messy. But yeah, so you can see here, I'm actually like mounding up quite a bit over each mold. Because all of that space, it's kind of like if you fill a glass to the top with ice cubes, and then whenever it melts, it's taking up a lot less of the glass. Um, with the frit, whenever it fuses and goes molten, it's taking up all those little spaces in between our little chunks of frit. And so it'll kind of melt down into the mold, if that makes sense. And I just use a soft bristled paintbrush to try to maneuver the frit to make sure it's going where I want it to be. What's up, baby? Ah! Well, 
I have no idea. I wonder what it's what its COE is. <laughs> and also with something so rare, I'd hate to <clears throat> I'd hate to risk messing it up, you know? So, if you guys want to just follow us on Patreon, I'll be doing a public post over there um, tomorrow with how these come out looking whenever we open the kiln up. As well as probably on the vlog, yeah. The Von Vlog. Von Vlog Vlog. Okay, so now that we have all of that stacked, we're going to come over here. And stack it. Just like that. Hmm. Suzette, right on. Thank you so much, Suzette. I need to write that down. Um, because it's, I've been kind of beating myself up over it that I couldn't remember, because every time I've been using the glass, I'm like, this glass is amazing. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much, Suzette. I'm sorry, I, your name had slipped to my mind. Okay, so we've only got about seven minutes left in today's stream. Do y'all have any questions or anything? Or we'll have some face-to-face Q&A time. Sorry, I'm just reading, trying to catch comments as they come in. Some stumbling or tripping and messing up. Right fit? Yeah, I try really hard. That's why you'll actually notice whenever I was doing the tile cabs earlier, I just stacked them directly in the kiln. I was like, I am not <laughs> getting all this set up and then stumbling on my way over. Would you like me to bring you all some apple bread pudding? Mm, yes, Penny. Do you even have to ask? Actually, for breakfast today, I made bacon and eggs and they're these little feetsies, aren't they? Sorry, I accidentally got your feet on camera. That's for my OnlyFans. Uh, yeah, that's for Randy's OnlyFans. <laughs> she says, FYI, because of the film coating that is used to make dichro, they tend to keep any sharp edges versus fully rounding like non dichro. That makes sense. Okay. That's really good to know, Katrina. Lydia says, I really want to see you create from start to finish glass cabs tutorials. Well, stay tuned. We actually have some more lampwork glass and some more fusing glass tutorials already shot and edited and scheduled for uh, Sunday. Every Sunday for like the next like five or six weeks, I already have a tutorial ready. So or at least in the works. Like, there's some of them that it's like I need to do, like, the intro and outro and then, like, put it together and stuff. But I'm pretty excited about it. Stay tuned. We saw you flip us, Randy. <laughs> this is Penny. Oh, my gosh. I've watched you guys for a while without saying things. Hello from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Still loving it. Hey, Galen. I'm really glad you like our work. Oof. Getting, getting pooped. Because <laughs> it's
it's a whole lot of like like putting the fused glass together itself is not like the most particularly challenging thing I've ever done but it takes a lot of like intense focus or I'm like 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 a white person in an infomercial just trying to hold 50 Tupperware at once and <laughs> how many layers can you do in the kiln? Um, how many layers can you do in the kiln? Well, let me flip this around. Because right now, we only have the two layers. And I have a plan for our next level of expansion. Um, is we're, I'm getting like a two inch post for on the bottom. That way we can put our molds on the bottom because the molds fuse just fine just sitting on the base of the kiln um and so we'll have like that'll be one layer and then we'll have that layer like that and then we'll be able to have another layer on top um and then i'd like these kiln shelves are like 50 dollars a piece um but again once we sell more cabs uh i'd like to get at least two more of these 12 inch kiln shelves because I I do have a 15 inch on back order from Delphi glass but if I have it go too close to the sides then the heat doesn't circulate around um, and so by it's a 16 inch square bed so with the kiln shelves being 12 inch square it has enough room that the cabs on the farthest edge they're still fuse fully Aw, hey Anita. Yeah, have you tips and tricks videos on how to incorporate macrame into necklaces? I do not. I love macrame, but I am not particularly good at it. Um, and certainly I don't feel good enough to add it to be teaching tutorials uh, whenever I feel like there are so many well done tutorials already. I haven't yet, but I really, really want to, Cynthia. <laughs> um, she says, I hate to nag, but do you think you'll, be yeah, it's, I've got that coming. I was having like, I was having some hangups for a while there because some of the people that I follow on Instagram had had this big, like, this was like probably almost a year, over a year ago at this point. But, like, they were getting, like, catty and ugly with each other about accusing each other of, like, ripping off designs like and these are people that I admire and respect like on a professional level so I was like so I was like well I'm here and inspired by their work because I mean we're on Instagram we're all like you know looking at pictures of each other's stuff like posting pictures being like look what I did and you, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I don't have any right to get upset if I make something post a picture of it on the internet for the whole world to see and then and then if somebody else makes something that's also kind of like that I don't get to get mad like I don't like even if it looks like something that's like a like like they copied it step by step they still made it their fingers still hurt at the end like and it's I don't get to throw stones because I stand on the shoulders of the giants who came before me I think is how the saying goes um but it really like it broke something super deep inside me and it's taken me over a year and a half, I, I guess it was a year and a half ago, um, to uh, get my pieces back together and get to where I could feel like I could be confidently creative again. Um, so, mm -hmm. I don't know, but just, <coughs> yeah. It was like in human drawing class, the model is the same, and why do they all feel the need to be 50-year-old men who don't want to turn away from me? <laughs> so a bunch of that drama in the polymer community last year. And it's... And, uh, Morgan G, send us an email about your cabs. Um, Randy has asked for you to send us an email, Morgan G, about your cabochons. Is everything okay? Yeah. I feel like I missed something. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, no, and it's, it, it's hard. 
like, so I'm not, I'm bitching, but I'm not being judgy. Like, I get it. Like, I've gotten upset before, but it's, that was seeing somebody post a tutorial based off of something that I had done, uh, like, back in, like, 2008, um, and then no mention, nothing, and I was like, and I got upset, and I was like, <coughs> excuse me, not the Rona, just allergies, first off, did not post publicly on social media, or go calling people out, or, like, none of that crap, I had to just bottle it up inside and let it fester until it <laughs> consumed me, um, but no, it's, you know, I had to just suck it up and get over it, because that's life, that's no business, baby, um, I think that would be a compliment. Every piece would be different in some way. You know, okay, and that's teaching tutorials where I actually show you guys step. Sorry, I thought there's a cat in my window. Where I actually show you guys exactly step by step how to do something. It's like that. That's been the best way I've been able to find of dealing with any feelings of like possessiveness that I might have over my designs. Because I still don't feel like there's anything I've ever done that's not derivative of someone else's work um or is someone else's like architecture or someone else's art style or something I saw in nature <laughs> like um ah Suzette oh my gosh but yeah I don't know I'll stop rambling about that now but Cynthia amen Um, I always think it's a compliment if someone wants to copy anything I create. I mean, they must like it if they want to do it themselves, right? Yeah. And it's, I don't know, you never know. Something that might tickle you pink one day, if you're in a mood the next week, and it happens again, it might just piss you square off. It's like, humaning is hard. <laughs> Friend of hers liked it. Or Phyllis says, it is like someone has one of my paintings. A friend of hers liked it. I told them I could paint one for them. She said she would make a copy and give it to them. Hmm. And it, it's hard to not have yucky feelings in your tum-tum about that. You know? Like, and I, I think that's a normal human reaction. I don't know. I'm like, but one person. But it's, I think it's a good idea to not hold on to feelings like that. As challenging as that may be. Um... So many beating tutorials are the same. I just watch the one that I understand the, the best. Right, Pi? Oh. <laughs> Ashley says everything pisses me square off. Well, you know, sometimes that's how it hits. <laughs> like, and it's one thing to be pissed squared off on the inside. But I, just, I try to, like, I've given up on trying to be a good person. I just want to be less of an asshole. Uh, if that's, like, as much as possible. <laughs> huh? What? Randy's over here invoking. Um. <laughs> but I think that being said... Rebel says, love your tutorials. I always try to find something on your channel first. Galen. Well, now that we're actually posting tutorials again, hopefully that'll be productive. Um, artists being copied should at least be acknowledged. And I'm with you on that, Galen. And it gets to a point, though, that, like, do you, like, because I'll see people follow along with, like, Oxana Crafts tutorials. And it's like, at what point does it become socially acceptable to not give credit every single time? Because it gets to a point that it's like, you know, like for, you know, that it just becomes a part of your style. Like you followed the tutorial, you practiced it a bunch, and now it's just part of your, your style. And so it's like, it, it's just, it's hard to know everywhere that that person walked and you know what they're going through and everything so it's like just because I see a post on Instagram that is something that looks like it was from somebody else's tutorial or and there's no credit given I'm like they might have given credit on the past 150 posts and this is the first one that they felt like you know yeah I'm not doing that anymore like you know like I don't know it's it's messy 
Like, you know, like, I don't know. And I feel like I don't get to throw stones, and it's none of my business at the end of the day anyways. So, do what? You. What? I don't know anything. I'm just bumping into shit. Um, yeah. Try to give credit where credit is due, but I watch so many tutorials, I forget who made what. And I'm kind of right there with you, Millis. So, like, I've been, like, act every day doing crafty shit for, like, 12 to 13 years now, and it's like, I don't remember where I learned some of these things. There might have been something that I saw anywhere between a week and six years ago that just surfaces through in my work today. Like, it's, like, it's buffering. It's very, very messy. Um, and so it's, like, uh, it's complicated. So I try to assume the best and, um, and mind my own business. <laughs> Do what, honey? In prepare for the worst. Uh, <laughs> we're all a-holes, but we need to be assertive at times. Amen, Christina. Is it acceptable to pick a stranger's nose if you see something that needs a picking? Or do you bring it to their attention and pretend to try? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, their booger is their business. Like, <laughs> unless it's getting on me, I don't mind it. Aww. Aww. Rebel. I only found you this year during the UK lockdown, but I've learned so much, especially in regards to wire wrapping. I think you all oh, well, right on, Jenny. Glad to be helpful to you. Red Cal says, here's my stance. If you learn something, usually if someone asks you, say, X taught me, they're really great. This could be learning to sew, read, do math, etc. I view it with the art the same, too. That's a really good way of looking at it. Morgan says, I saw tutorials where the artist said that you need to use their tutorial, that if you use their tutorials, you need to credit them everywhere you sell. They said that it was because they didn't want competition on Etsy and stuff. I don't know. I cannot speak for other artists at all. I can barely speak for myself in general. Um, but I personally never put any, like, I can not emphasize enough how much only from my own experience can I speak. But it's, I never really tried to enforce or suggest or anything like that. Like the most I think I've ever asked for is that if anybody, like Red Kell said, that if anybody ever asks you, oh my gosh, how do you do this? Pass the info on. You don't even have to reference back to me. Just be, just help educate them in any form possible. Just be like, yeah, I learned how to do it on YouTube or, you know, something. Just like be helpful to them as someone else interested in the in this artsy craftsy thing that we're doing um but i feel like to try to do anything beyond that while can feel very justified is also such a losing battle sometimes and it can put it can inspire feelings of insecurity and resentment in your students and it's like i don't know I, ne I never had that strong of an opinion about it that I felt enough needed re needed enforcement. You know, I cannot speak for those other artists, but, you know, Ke Kelly says, Vaughn Keyword, you have 136,000 subs. I am very far behind, but I wanted to address everyone's comments. Um, I'm still the same pile of garbage that I was before I even had a YouTube channel. Having... That's a lot of subscribers, I'm not going to lie to you. Not that YouTube actually lets them know that I post videos or anything, so... But that doesn't make me more valid than somebody who doesn't have a YouTube channel. Like, I don't feel like that means anything. Like, does that make sense? Like, on a, on a broader scope of, like, my opinion does not have more validity in the field of tutorials just because I've got a bunch of subscribers. Like, I feel like everybody's opinion and experience is valid, and, you know, if you've got something to contribute, people should just listen. It doesn't matter if you have subscribers or not. Um, ha! Brooke says, I follow an artist who once got accused of ripping off their own work. Ha! It's just derivative! <laughs> Oh, Cynthia! Oh my god, I love that! Don't throw stones, wrap them! That's probably the most... Oh, I need that, like, embroidered. 
on like a thing that I can hang on my wall. <laughs> like that I can beat people with. <laughs> right, Jennifer. It can make you mad. I see fierceness in those eyes of yours. Eh. I don't know. I'm a well-fed house cat. I don't know if I actually get upset about anything. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'll start to get in it, and I'm like, eh. What's the point? We're all stardust anyways. Like, does anything matter? Like, <laughs> Right. Drama says, I have ideas in my head. Are these ideas based unconsciously on something I've seen before? Likely, yes. Does that make it any less unique and yours and awesome? I don't think so. I used to go to gem show and come home and make the pieces for myself. Guilty. Like, <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of people who disagree with my perspective on this, and that's okay. And if you're one of those people who disagree with me, I want you to know you're still my friend like I respect your difference in opinion like and because you have a completely different life experience than I do like completely different background like everything that has brought you to this moment to where you are now where you clicked on my face um has made you who you are and I respect that like namaste bitches but like it's I, I, I can only feel how I feel and have the perspective that I have because I'm only looking through these eyes, you know? Um, yeah. Most of the things I know how to do, I learned watching tutorials. Right on, Lisa. Sadly, last Friday I lost my job. Oh no, Sam! Due to the state of the world, so back to crafting again until something else comes up. Well, I mean, that's horrible that you lost your job, but welcome back down the rabbit hole, Sam! Hopefully we can, you know, help you out. Just commenter getting snide because they'd seen it on YouTube before and no credit given. Gotcha, Brooke. You have inspired me to learn polymer clay. Oh, Lori. Which I've never been inspired to do before. It's a slippery slope of addiction. I hope you like it. Mm. Okay, I'm trying to get... Oh, Cynthia. Oh, no. I'm a festering... I'm a swamp troll. <laughs> <laughs> managed to open a stuck dry without spilling salts on myself. Go me. I'm proud to have someone to make whatever I made. Right, Julia? Okay. Phyllis says, I love the way you accept perspectives. Not to be this way, but what else are you gonna do? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, what's it? There was a, a, a comic, like just a single panel comic I had seen that was like, it was the number six. And one person was standing on this side, and one person was standing on this side, and this person was like, it's a nine, and this person was like, no, dummy, it's a six, and it's like, ah, <laughs> what? Um, do you know how strange it is to see you, and then look behind you and see Randy watching the live stream also? Eh, pretty strange. You know how weird it is to be upstairs doing my makeup, and then come downstairs and hear Randy having a conversation with me, because he's watching my vlog? <laughs> And I'm like, I'll cut that bitch. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, and Randy's like, no, don't be mad, girls. Just get along. Sam says, bring on the crafting, wrapping, and creating. Have missed you so much. Uh, we're glad to have you back, Sam. Droma says, I feel that I should have never started watching tutorials, as I had a style prior to knowing anything about wire wrapping. Have I gotten better? Yes. Have I been influenced? Unfortunately, yes. And I kind of I kind of get that, Droma, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully it won't always be unfortunately because um, a lot of the skills and techniques and practice that you're getting in now following along with tutorials, um, that you'll be able to refine what you're doing and distill it back down into your own unique style again. And that's something that um, through any kind of art form I've ever been learning, there's always that beginning period of replication or duplication or you know, mimicking and then it just it, it it's a process but it comes around full circle to where you'll one day be able to 
better realize your initial designs and uh, concepts and stuff. And it's honestly, it feels really good whenever I've learned something from one of y'all or, you know, learned something in a tutorial and the person teaching it wasn't an asset. Um, or like, you know, just any, any positive experience that I get to have with other artisans. Um, it, it's almost like seeing like family photos or something. Every time I do a piece of work and I can see those little bits that were influenced by these other people who I respect, who I admire, who are friends of mine, like, and it's, and so it can feel really good. So hopefully being influenced by the people you're learning from will always be a negative thing. Uh, I, okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. Y'all are my favorite bunch of human beings. And not to be racist, but people are the worst. But, <laughs> like, humans suck. Humans suck. <laughs> um, no, like, oh, uh, I so prefer chickens and cats and dogs and rabbits over humans. But I like y'all. Like, it's okay. Some some of my some of my best friends are humans. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Speciesist, yeah. <laughs> Sam says been watching your vlog. Your garden's looking amazing. Ah, thank you. I've actually been home to like water it ish sometimes. <laughs> Rebel says, heck, I didn't start this until past 60. No way you're over 60, Rebel. I can honestly say these are my best years now. Ah, right on. Well, I'm glad to be mucking about in them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, I just, um, Squirrel God just said, humans are an aggressive breed. It's like, they're not fit for being around children or small animals. <laughs> <laughs> but no, truly though, like, y'all are the best. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us in these videos and live streams and stuff. And Jamie says, I so enjoy the vlog, part of my morning routine. Woo, woo, right on. Ah, gotcha, Cynthia. Well, going forward, let's presume the best about each other and worst case scenario, just hide in our craft rooms. Um... <laughs> <laughs> if we do not learn from each other, we become stagnant. Here's to growing. Here's to growing, Mary. I'm going to go find my coffee and get back to work, see if I can make anything out of that wire we were messing about with earlier. And um, I love y'all. Give yourselves a big hug from the both of us. You want to say bye, Randy? Bye, Randy. We'll see y'all in Saturday's patron exclusive live stream, Sunday's premiere at noon. I'm actually looking forward to Which part? All of it. All Between of it. The rain. Yeah. The shenanigans. There, there was much shenanigans to be had. But we'll see y'all. Have a wonderful day. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye. Bye, chunky cat.